What is the difference between a join and an apply? And when should you use a cross apply or an auto apply? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of filecouts.co.uk. Being able to manipulate two sets of data together is one of the fundamental things that you need to know when creating SQL queries. So let's take an example of the most common way to combine, joining. So we've got two tables here, sys.objects and sys.columns. Now, if I look at them both, you can see that they will both have object ID. And what happens is this contains all of the objects and this contains all of the columns for each individual object. So we have an object number three here and it's just one object, but it has multiple rows. So you can see it has 13 rows and then we go into object number five, which has got 18 rows and then object number six and so forth. So suppose I wanted both of these to be in the same query. Well, the way I would do this is to put a join. So it could be an inner join, or it could be a left join, also known as a left outer join, or it could be a right join, also known as a right outer join, or it could be a cross join, or it could be a full outer join. So for information about which particular join you should use, have a look at my video all about joins. But I'm just going to use an inner join for this. And the way that I use this, because these tables don't have very easy manipulatable names, I'm just going to rename them. I'm going to give them an alias. So I've got an O for cis objects and a C for cis columns. Then I've got to say what is similar in each. Well, what is similar in each is the object ID. So that's what I want to use to say whether one particular row matches with another one. So here, this row would not match with this because the object ID is dissimilar. But here, it would match because they're the same. So we say on, and then we list the object ID in this case, the field which is the same. So now if I run this, you can see that we have got all of the tables, various rows, all of the fields, all together. So that is a standard way of connecting two separate pieces of information together and join. Now you could also use things like unions and so forth if you wanted not to add extra columns, but to have rows underneath each other. Now, what I want to have a look at now is something completely different. This is called a DMV. So this is a system dynamic management view and Let's just run it. And you can see here, we've got a list of all of the cached plans that the computer is holding in its memory. And one of the columns is this plan handle. Now this row in itself is not very useful. It's not user friendly to me. I want to extract what the actual text is that this plan has. And the way I use this is by using this DMV, dynamic management view. But unfortunately, it requires something in the brackets. I can't just run it like this. What I need instead is to have in the brackets, and you notice we've got a different number of rows. That's because it's dynamic management view. What we need in the brackets are the plan handle. So I need to copy this and put this into here. So no quotation marks or anything like this. This is not a string. This is what's called a binary, bracket 64. So if I run this, we can see that we've got some text in here and I can copy this text out and see what it is. So you can see we have got information about this exec SQL table. In other words, we're actually retrieving information about this DMV from the DMV. Now, if I go back to this cached plan and run it again, and I think I'll run this one first just to give it some more cached plans to play with you can see that each of the cache plans has got a different plan handle. So that is a different thing that we've got to put in the brackets. So if I was looking at the second row, I would change what's in the brackets. And here we can see something completely different. And this thing which is completely different is in fact this text that I have just run. So what I want is to be able to have this text in this query. And that seems like it would be a join except every time I run this DMV, 
I want something different in the brackets. So it's not the same set of information. So this is always the same set of information if I run it now or if I run it in a second later, as long as the information hasn't changed. However, this is going to be different for each thing that I put in the brackets. So what I need is not a join in this particular case, but an apply. I am applying information from this into the brackets. So this is the only time really when you use cross applies, when you've got a parameter for a function or a DMV that keeps changing. So if I just try and use a join, so let's go inner join. It then says, okay, I want something in the brackets. Okay, what do we want in the brackets? We want the plan handle. So let's put in plan handle. And you can see the computer is generating quite a few errors. It's going, don't know what you talked about. Okay, well, maybe I should alias this, so CP for cached plans. I'll put CP in here. Nope, still not working. Maybe I'll change this join from an inner to a cross because a cross join does not require this on. And now I get a different error. So this identifier could not be found. Well, it says it's a multi-part identifier. Well, maybe it's a CP that it doesn't like. So I'll run that and it says invalid column name. So these are lots of clues to say that something is wrong with this particular query. So the only thing I need to change from this being a cross join is the word join. I just need to say apply. So if I do that, now each time it runs this particular query, it will substitute a different plan handle in each particular row. So if I run this, you can see now we have got the original columns. Don't worry about the number of rows changing. This is dynamic. And we've got all of the text. Now this is a cross apply. There is also an auto apply. So what's the difference between the two? Well, a cross apply only retrieves the information where we've got something in table number one or view number one and something in view of function number two. So only where they are the same. An auto apply gives me the entirety of this plus where this exists or where it doesn't. So if I run this, we'll probably have the same number of varying rows. So I'll run it again, we'll probably have different number of rows sometimes, but it could be that this text is blank or more accurately null. So a cross apply and an auto apply, they're only to be used if you're using something like a function or DMV, dynamic management view, where we've got something in the brackets, a parameter, and it keeps changing. Most of the other times, however, you would stick to using a join, whether it's an inner join, a left or right outer join, a cross join, or a full join. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.